Welcome to the Life Creation Podcast. I'm your host, Andrina Tisi. Together, we will explore thoughts, inspirations, and conversations that feed our soul, spark the mind, and nourish the body. Thank you so much for being here to learn and grow and for walking this journey called life with me. Hello, thank you for being here for another episode of the Life Creation Podcast. And today I have Tulasi here with me. And she is a childhood education expert. She is a coach for children, for parenting and for educators and also the founder of Mindful Tree, which is an innovative educational system. And you will hear her talk about it, and it's truly inspiring. Her mission is big, (laughs) and it is to support parents and their children by creating a space for discussion, co-creation, and growth. She aims to help parents be the best possible version of themselves. And she does this through the unique and very powerful Mindful Tree program, which uses a combination of mindfulness, growth mindset and various academic tools, science-based inquiry and discussion to help promote the healthy development of the child-parent-child-educator relationship. Aside from coaching session and programs, she runs workshops and mastermind groups for parents, kids and educators, and the Mindful Tree Saturday Club for kids between 2 and 12. She says... We are the architects of our children's future and together we can create a community of self-confident and impactful parents and educators. Welcome to the Life Creation Podcast. I'm so happy you're here, Tulasi. Did I pronounce that right? (laughs) Tulasi. Tulasi, sorry. No problem, it is okay. How are you this evening? I'm great. Happy to be here. Thankful as well. And it's always important and nice to be between like-minded people that want to motivate others or bring some value to others. Excellent. Well, thank you for taking time to share what you have to share. And I know there is lots. So before we dive right in, I have four questions for you which you can just answer spontaneously and the first is what is your favorite season spring Spring. oh i just see butterflies (laughs) (laughs) if you could what superpower would you have Mm. Help all the world to be a better person. I think you do that already. As many as I wanted to do. Yeah. What is always in your fridge? Cheese. Cheese? Swiss cheese? Not really. Like like creamy cheese. Okay. Cream cheese. Yeah. Mm Mm-hmm. Cool. Which book is currently on your bedside table? Right now is Be As You Are. This is a book about uh, like motivation, mm-hmm. phrases, and also a lot of insights, reflection sites. Excellent. And what is the name? I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. Be As You Are. Oh, beautiful. Yes, I did hear about that. Beautiful. Thank you. So you do very important work and I I love that we're able to connect. And I would like to start with what is an innovative educational system for you? 
So when I think about innovation, I think about something that brings new way of thinking and there's a new way of doing. That's why I say that the system, the educational system, the mindful tree is innovative. Why? Because we bring a new way of doing stuff. For example, in the educational system, normally they want you to bring and give you as much knowledge as possible, right? Yes. Then they don't really much care if it is will be useful for you. In many cases, you say, oh, why am I learning this? Why am I learning that? This wasn't really what I need to live. And the mindful to educational system, everything that you learn is what you need for this 21st century. Mm -hmm. We teach about leadership, entrepreneurial thinking, solution-oriented growth mindset, communication, and many other topics. So anyone can say, I learned something, but is this exactly what you need for being a successful person? When I speak about successful, there is nothing to do about, oh, maybe there is something to do, but not only about professional, about having position, but be successful completely in your relationship, in your way of thinking, living aligned. So it's very holistic. It's great. I was just, um, when you said successful, I was just going to ask you what, what you mean, what successful is for you, because I think that can be misunderstood a lot of times because a lot of people just um, see the career or the work behind that word. And there is, there is so much more for me as well. So it's really beautiful what you say. Thank you. Yes, and you can be, in our understanding, you can be successful professionally and as a person in your private life and also in your environment. It's wonderful when you have great friends, that you have a wonderful network, when you can just feel yourself and understand, wow, I'm living my purpose. Yes. That is. And how are, like, what is the age of children that you're kind of focusing on? So I work with children actually from babies to 17 years old. First of all, I'm a child care director. So we have, I have babies like two weeks wow. even. And in the child care, they are still like preschoolers, right? Before going to the kindergarten. And then I work in the Mindful Tree Saturday Club with children between four and 12. And I run workshops and this and that, masterminds, and also coaching sessions for children until 17 years old. That's why I'm a childhood education expert. So I understand about the childhood from the beginning, as soon as they, they are born, till they end this phase and go to the adults, like young adults. And I want to go back to that successful because they also talk about um, helping, you know, helping our children to to win pretty much. So I want to find out from you what is what does winning mean for you, and is it does it go into line what you mentioned about being successful? This is one point, not all. Because when you say, sometimes I use it to say about uh, successful, broken people. Okay. What does it mean? You have the money, you have the position, maybe you have power, but you are completely broken. Yeah. You are not emotionally intelligent. You are suffering. Your relationship 
in general, not only like love relationship, but also friendship and your connection with other workers is poor and you don't have anyone more than the possessions. So there are a lot of people that in this category, yeah. especially in this time. So for me to be a winning person means you are successful in your professional life, but you are successful with your self and also with the relationship that you have. You are like a satisfied person. So doesn't mean that you have to have a high position if you don't want. If you want, you can have it. This is completely okay. If this is your mission, is your purpose. But you can be completely satisfied being something that you love to do. For example, I got to know a cleaner. And she comes and clean my house. And she's so satisfied. I, can, I can't do that. This would be like boring for me. But she loves to do what she's doing. She feels completely satisfied. So one point she already had, she has this successful, she's satisfied, this one point. Now, by the mindful tree, you're going to work not only to be satisfied, but to have the life, the freedom that you wanted to have. I think it's a, really, it's a really good point because I also think that society teaches us that, well, you know, we have to have this high position or this so-and-so career and that's what's quote-unquote fulfilling and a different job may have less status like let's call it status right yes um, but where's the joy <laughs> right so i think this is really really beautiful to empower you know this children to not only go by what um you know I'm going to say the society says is successful or you should quote unquote go for, but really connect with what you mentioned with the mission and the purpose. And so my question now is how, how do we teach or how do, you know, and of course I'm guessing it depends on the age um, that you're then um, supporting or the age um, the child that the child is at how do we support a child to gain this emotional intelligence, to gain this social intelligence even, and not just the, you know, the, what we learn in the books kind of things, right? But really this intelligence for life and to also um, be resilient and then to come into this winning, what you just explained and successful lifestyle, really. So as a parent, the most important aspect is create rituals, daily mm -hmm. rituals. This doesn't mean to have a long time doing things with the child. This can be even 10 minutes, but daily. When you open, you give a space for them, for talking, for express opinions to be understood, to be accept, acceptable as, as, they, as they are, and especially accept their differences and try daily to motivate the uniqueness that they have. This is one point. If you speak about educators, then I would say, Create like discussions, exercises, debates. So what kind of what kind of discussions, for example? For example, right now there are so many topics. Could be depends on how old is the child. Could be about Corona. What do you think? Why do you think about this? 
And do you see exactly like now that the society is completely with like a divided with two opinions, or sometimes even three or something like that. So the children also will have like different opinions, but you are going to give them opportunity to express themselves and to accept what they are telling and make like reflection, collective questions. It's not all about what you are doing, why you think about this and accept and take what is powerful from this discussion. And probably what's a really important aspect is, is that these children then feel safe to share what they have to share. Exactly. And this is in both spaces, in the family, in the schools. In both cases, you have to create a safe space. Because so, for, you, sorry, go ahead. <laughs> because for example, if a child say, I don't like foreigners, for example. And they don't have the opportunity to express or are going to be judged. They will not tell anymore. And it's important to create this space that they can express. And then from that, we can create discussions and make the difference. And finally, they will have to create their own opinion, but still, you have to accept what they are telling. You have to be open enough. Because what is in the politics is exactly like this. Someone says something, someone else, so some somebody else says something else. And you can take what is the best of each point, or you can just get in discussions and in fights and create rivalities. And I think that's where then also the the social skill gets created, like especially with the older, like with the teenagers, for example, right? Then one has one opinion or one experience and maybe another one has something else. And then, you know, in a safe space that can be shared and they can learn from each other. Exactly, especially because even if you don't agree, they have a reason for having these opinions probably comes from some experience in the past. Mm -hmm. So, and by giving them the opportunity to talk and express and tell why they are thinking about this, you can also help them to understand that some points that they thought that is the reality, maybe it's like a, a very punctual reality. And so you so you work with, of course, you have the children, the young adults, you know, and then you have you have the parents or the family system, and then you have the education system or the educators. Mm -hmm. um, and I could imagine that the work with the family system and the education system is very different. But you work with both. You combine all of that, correct? Yes. Actually, like this, I was analyzing a 15 years working in the pedagogical field. I was analyzing why something is happening, why the educational system is getting like a cake and not really working on what they have to work. That is like help the parents to, to raise confident, strong, and resilient people, adults in the future. So, and by thinking on that, I just this, I started to make some research. And this research, I really could find that if you want to really help children, you have to support the educators because children stay so many hours daily in the school. You have to support the parents because parents are the most important role models yeah. and they go home. 
So that is a lot of influence. And the other aspect is you have to support the child. Because the child is the one that is going to create a new life and be the next citizen. So it's not only important to, to take care about the child, but their environment. For example, I have it, worked with children that in the family were wonderful. Yes. But at the school, they were full of traumas because they were bullied, they couldn't speak what they want to speak. The teachers were like very authoritarian. There are so many children, actually would say the new adults that are completely like traumatized from the time that they were at the school. And that is what the mindful tree educational system wants to avoid. Yeah. Create this wonderful environment from all sides that they can just jump from one place to other and grow. So, you know, you have so, so much experience and you work with so many different ages and different families and different situations because every, every family is, you know, has a whole different dynamic as well. Is there something that keeps amazing or surprising you when you work with, with you know, the different children or even the family or the educators? Like, where do you... You know, I have that in my work. And sometimes I'm like, oh my God, this is still so exciting, right? <laughs> um, so what is that for you? So to work with children is always exciting because they are a box of surprise. Mm -hmm. But what really amazes me is that they can redefine themselves day after day, again and again. And their flexibility and resilience is something like a very unique. Mm -hmm. And this is what really makes me feel and it honor them. Wow. How when I see, for example, especially the ones that I can like support for a long time, what how they were before, how they are now. And the old way, all the changes, all the adaptations and flexibility and way of thinking. So if you speak about adults, it's more difficult. So the children, is very, they are very special because they are like a sponge. They are there and open and want to do. This is something that amazes me and makes me more and more flexible just by working with them. By the parents is something what really makes me wonder is even when they are overwhelmed and acting in such a way that sometimes it's like they're really parents. So like yeah, in doubt if they are really being good parents, is still all parents want the best for the children. Yes. And they are trying the best that they can. So the willingness to be better parents is already there. That's why they have to use this willingness to become parents, better parents and best parents, in fact. And this is something that really amazed me. You can go all families, even families when many children are like traumatized. If you really go deep, you see that they are trying to do their best. And by the educators, what really amazes me is even now that we are in 21st century, so many educators I still work with old tools. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Tools that are not really ideal for now. They already experienced this. They need to create exactly this to develop this willingness to be a new educator, an educator for this age, for these needs, 
for the actual needs of the children of the society. That is what is amazing. So many want to keep in the same line. And that's why when you hear about Vishen Lakhiani and so many other ones like it, leaders, folk leaders, they are like to say very disgusted or frustrated with the system. So I wanted to give my collaboration this way. Yeah, I think there are so many good points that you mentioned. I think one is really important that what you said about the, the parents, that they do the best they can at the knowledge they have right now. And I think also for parents can also be very hard on themselves and have very high expectations, right? Yeah. And I think it's beautiful what you said about the children and their flexibility and also adaptability. And I'm curious to talk a little bit more about resilience. Okay. And, um, well, first, what is resilience for you? And what do you think makes, I'm going to say a person, because I think, you know, what you're going to say is going to really determine how resilience, you know, you and I are like an adult is at the end, or not at the end, but, you know, um, what makes a person or yeah, even a child, what makes us more resilient? Or what helps our re resilience? So let me define what is resilience in a very easy way. Mm -hmm. It is ability to cope with any kinds of changes, challenges that comes to you. Life is full of challenges and this makes exciting, right? And when you speak about what is necessary to be resilient is first of all, work in oneself to understand own value accept own voice opinion because you have to have strong self-esteem for being resilient if you feel like nothing everything that comes will like punch you but if you have the inner strength that's why when you speak about the mindful tree, you think about the roots. The roots are very deep. So the tree knows I'm here. And then comes all the windows, winds. And these make even stronger. But the tree knows its power. Exactly like me, if you think, I should be the most unhappy person. My parents died. I suffered from bankrupt in family. And then I came to a country where I didn't speak the language. And still, I could work on myself because I knew my power. I knew my strength. And it could be then suddenly director of a child care that there is more than 70 families, 70 is not less. So, and many other things then become a child, uh, child care director, then child education expert. But in my life, there are so many challenges that has made me strong. But why? I had a good family a family that work, worked on this self-confidence, that my voice matter. I could speak whatever I need to speak, whatever I want to speak. So when they died, I could understand, I can do it. I have all that I need. And then growth mindset and all this stuff, finding solutions, finding ways of new ways of doing things, I reach my goal. So that is the point. To be resilient, you need to work first on yourself, develop self-esteem, develop 
understand yourself, understand your strengths, have an opportunity to talk and don't have fear. I'm not, I'm not like if I cannot say that I'm completely fearless. I don't. So there are parts, but in general, I'm open to try new things. And even if I, I have fear, I try it. Yeah, because you have trust in yourself, yes. right? I think then it, 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 it one leads to the other, right? Yes. And um, maybe you have, and I mean, you shared so many good things that, that I think can be implemented, um, but what is one or two ways that today, you know, when the listeners listen to that, whether they're, you know, whether they have children or, you know, on their own or they have, you know, we all have children in our life in one way or another. How can we support them to develop their own voice and their self-esteem and their self-confidence that then leads to that resilience? Like maybe just, you have like maybe just one or two or three tips that can be implemented very easily. Right now, you start with affirmations. If you are already adult and you don't feel so confident, work with affirmations. Make a list of whatever you can do. Put everything there, like brainstorm your all things that you can do and see which ones you do like very well. Because you have to start with, with what you already have. And then keep doing these things, mastering these things. Try to share with others what you know how to do well, because this will give you confidence. And create opportunities for yourself to show up. I know it's difficult, when especially when you are you have low esteem but this is something that you have to do if you really want to work on that and then from this aspect you can start to see the blessings that you have in each challenge that you live maybe one day you have a lot of debits. So it's opportunity right now, work on that. So I have these debts. What, have, what is there to learn? Does it make me happy? Probably not. So what I can do for changing this reality, this temporary reality? And always understand that whatever it comes, even the stuff that you would say that is bad, it comes to give us to give us a lesson, and take these lessons and work further, never stop. And of course, if you are already adult and with so many like limiting beliefs, you really need it to sort for someone, a coach, a mentor that can help you to do the first steps and create strategies together. So would you, would you um, like this list that you mentioned, would you then suggest, for example, you know, if a parent is listening now, um, would you... Um, encourage them to do this list together with their child so then that the child can you know figure out what you know where they're good at and then keep doing that is that what what you're suggesting i would say like this if you want to do like a family everyone or the each of each one do their own list with the stuff that they can do wonderfully and they can do well, and then they share with each other. This will create trust. And also give opportunity to your child to understand that you are not perfect. 
there are things that you don't do so well. So the child can read this list for you and you can read, or even you both can write down and just like give it to another and then you read it. And then you can give your opinion. For example, if I read a list of my child and I see this, I can like reinforce. Yeah, I say, so this and this, this quality that you wrote, I really feel that you have it. Last time you did this and this and that, and they could really see something like this, then you're empowering. And the child, you can deep on the zone. Sometimes the child is like seven years old or something. You can ask them. So you read my list. Do you agree or you don't agree? Mm-hmm. What is for you, visible for you? they work together yeah and I think that's really beautiful because you mentioned you know earlier on about the rituals right and I think that's Mm -hmm. that's such a beautiful ritual because it can also be something that can be you know doesn't have to be ones you know it can be done you know on a on a I don't know regular basis right exactly especially because every day and every week or every year we just grow or change. So you have always something new to write. And things things happen in our day and in our world, right? So there's always something that that is happening. Well, thank you so much. This is such a, it's such inspiring. And I'm so glad that you're doing the work, you know, you do, because it's so, so important to empower and to support um our children and young adults and you do have a very special gift for our listeners and i really thank you for that and i would like you to you know just share what you would like to offer to the listeners so there are two big gifts one is for children i wanted to offer 10 handmade samples of a book that I'm working on it right now with the main points of the mindful tree is exercise, is coloring, all this stuff. And there is there are a lot of topics that you can discuss as family. And the other one is like the 15 minutes exploration call. If you need something or you are worrying about something or just want to improve your parenting skills, you can contact me for 15 minutes and have at least the first draft of your strategy map. That's perfect. Thank you so much. We will, of course, also link that in our show notes so people can, can find you. So really, thank you so much for your time. I really, really enjoyed our conversation. Is there anything else that you want to share that we've not touched on? So first of all, I wanted to thank you once more for giving me this opportunity. And for the listeners, I want to say, parenting is a lifetime job. (laughs) And... There are up and down. Just try to see the beautiful points of being a parent and work each day to be a better one. Children really feel, they feel when you are doing the best that you can do. And this is already a good basis for creating like for creating fulfilling relationships. So avoid to be hard with you, understand this life learning process, and especially ask for help. I'm here and there are so many other ones that are here for helping and there are so many sources. Don't be ashamed. We learn by doing and by learning, that is. So there is no this kind of perfect parent. 
The perfect parent is a parent that always tries to do the best that they can do and at the same time try to work on themselves because you cannot give from empty cup. Right. That's why I work especially with thriving parents and educators. It's not a kind of uh, give yourself for being a good parent. It's work on yourself and grow by helping your children, your partner to be a better person. It's mutual growth. What a beautiful way to wrap up this conversation. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. Thanks to you. To get more of this inspirational voice and to take advantage of her offerings, whether you're a parent or you have children in your life in whatever form and in whatever relationship and you feel the mindful tree would be something for them or for friends that you have, check out the links in the show notes where you will find all the information as well as the gifts that Tulasi is offering, including the samples for her kids book, as well as the link to book a free exploration call with her. Thank you so much for being here and let's spread this very beautiful message of a innovative and mindful education system. <laughs>